nowadays women are more masculine and men are becoming more feminine we need to tone it down a little and men need to tone it up a little single moms where they have to take on the masculine side we tend to neglect ourselves at that time i had lost my best friend had problems in a relationship that i was in pushed me to the limit this is why i'm always quiet or within a day or two that pain that i had for nine years it disappeared i went to doctors i went to a lot of people nobody could figure out what was going on and i'm like well my parents i'm not gonna be able to help them they are who they are and they're never gonna change and i feel like i gave up within a year seeing my mom change um opened up my eyes if my mom can change then anybody has hope, you know, because it's hard to change your parents. So anyways, welcome to the show. May I call you Emmy? Yes. Okay. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you on this live show, sort of live, um, is because I like your approach. I like how you're different. You work with women, with their hormones, what's right for them. I'm not specializing in that, um, even though I did buy a course that I have not done yet. <laughs> and it's at the Czech Holistic, the same school that we both went to. You need to take that one. That one I, changed my life. And yeah. like, with clients, it mm -hmm. it helps a lot. I, I loved how they talked about like the whole animal approach. Wait, was it animal approach or they just use like maiden? They were talking about maiden. Oh, yeah. So can you explain to us what that's all about? Yeah. So with the, I do have a workshop where it's just mainly on the hormonal imbalance of women because if we can't find balance in that area, we will struggle throughout our life. We need to have balance or find balance in that area. There are a lot of archetypes that we go through um, throughout the month. So there's the maiden, the nurturer, the wise woman, and there was one more. But we, we usually go through these little cycles of us like finding ourselves from those four different archetypes. One week we're at our lowest. We have our low energy. We don't have we don't, we were like in a bad mood. You know how they say women go crazy when they're on their period? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, we do because we, our hormones are like everywhere and we, we need to find balance in that. And especially when women don't have balance in that area, we tend to be more aggressive. We tend to not have enough energy, low mood. Um, it's just overwhelming for women. So when, oh, earthquake, sorry. <laughs> Is it controllable? Because I'm not a woman. I, what I see is what I receive and my interpretation. So my, in my mind, I think there's a lot of, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong on this one, but for women, they are, when they're on their periods and they go crazy, yeah. is that correct? Yeah. They're doing a lot of suppression, deflecting, uh, almost like what guys do as in, you know, when you talk to a guy, you say, hey, you know, how are you doing? He's like, fine, but doesn't express it. And then during a day, there's boiling points where they just go all out. Yes. Is there some of that? Yes. And I agree with that. Um, that week that we're on our period or even a week before, we tend to want to just be left alone because that's the time where we need to just relax, chill, you know, not overwork ourselves. And we just need to find out what cycles will hit us more than the others. Some women tend to overwork themselves and they um, use all their energy. And then that's, that's where it creates like sickness, disease. Like we, we tend to bring all that into our lives when we don't find balance in it. Does working out play a role in this Yes, it does definitely. I would suggest like for myself when I'm on my period, I tend to not work so much when a week before I'm on my period because that's I don't have enough energy that at that time I do struggle. So I tend to just relax. My workouts are very light. I t try to do Tai Chi, meditation, yoga. I do workouts that are going to be working in instead of working out. 
So I bring back that energy in. And what happens, because I see this a lot. I just don't know what happens. <laughs> uh, but what happens when you actually work out during your period? So when you're on your period, is that what you're asking? Yes, yes. That's, okay. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you don't have that much energy. You're not that strong at that moment. So you're working out too much. And then you tend to stress your body even more. So that's when you create the imbalance of the hormones. So you're going to be using too much energy and you overwork yourself. Which can probably lead to injury. Definitely. Does that mess up your period when you're working out? Uh, it doesn't mess it up. Um, sometimes no. if your um, the hormonal balance is you know balanced, like if you're good in that area and you're taking care of yourself, you will have the energy to work out. You'll be in a good mood. You won't be overwhelmed. You're not going to be stressed out. So you'll be able to do a lot more. A lot of my clients come to me and their hormones are imbalanced. And it's because as mothers, we tend to have so much going on and we tend to neglect ourselves. And so you're saying you teach this yes, for women to balance when to go hard and when to go light or go yes. in. Yeah, so we we figure out how their um their program is. You know, when they come mm -hmm. to me, sometimes they're overworking, sometimes they're underworking. We try to find a balance and create a program that fits them. So every woman that comes to me is always different. In your experience, are there more people that are overworked than underwork? Definitely, yes. I would agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. there I had a hormonal workshop in May of this year and. A lot of women were like overworked. They were stressed out. They tend to take on a lot, especially um, single moms where they have to take on the masculine side and they have to take care of their finances and it's so much for them. So I do see a lot of women struggling with that. My next question is why did you decide to go to this towards this route? Um, for the hormonal? For or? the hormonal, maybe even like coaching in general, like what you do. Because I don't consider you as like your typical personal trainer. I consider you as a, you know, holistic integrative movement specialist or whatever you want to call it, but uh, treating the, the body as a whole. And so my question is, why did you decide to go towards that route instead of the typical personal training route? So about 10 years ago, I started, I became a personal trainer and I was going through a lot at that time. I felt like I hit rock bottom. Working out helped me out a lot, but there was more to it than just working out. When I started researching, especially for women, like there's a lot of stuff that we, we suppress emotions. And those emotions creates pain, injuries. It creates a lot of traumas. I came across the Czech Academy and I already had been working on myself. So that kind of put things in perspective of there's more to just training, you know, there's more to life than just training. There's other things that will work to balance our life. When I found the Academy, like they had every um, area that I was looking into, like they had it set up already. And that brought me to become a holistic lifestyle coach and an integrative movement specialist. So that's how I got into being a Czech practitioner. That uh, brings back memories for me as well. <laughs> Definitely had a similar experience. Mm -hmm. For me, it was self-development. I was always into self-development, even as a 17 year old. You know, that's when I realized there's more than working out. Another question I have for you is when you're teaching these workshops, what is the first thing that you do when it comes to these movements? With my clients, I usually start with their dream and we set we set a goal. We set their core values. We begin by creating a vision. And from there, I have them, I give them um, some homework. So they create their own vision board. They add what they want in life. And from there, we, we will start with their four doctors. So I give them the tool or I show them the tools, and the techniques of what they need to be doing in order to accomplish those goals. So first we start with the four doctors and we get their sleep in order. Sleep is the biggest thing when I work with clients because I'm always hearing them like, I don't get enough sleep. I have headaches, you know, 
and in order to balance that, you need to get enough sleep. You know, you're not going to have enough energy if you're not getting enough sleep. And a lot of my clients come to me drinking a lot of energy drinks, pre-workout, coffee, and and I do remind them the reason why you need this is because you're not getting enough sleep. Once they get that in order, we move on to their diet. So we figure out where they're at. I teach them on eating organic foods, drinking the clean water, being hydrated, and then we go to doctor movement. So doctor movement is um, where we start a program and starting to move their bodies, working out, getting out, getting sun, doing stuff outside instead of just staying at home or staying inside an office and not being able to do those things. Mm. And then we go on to trying to remember the the fourth doctor. Uh, so doctor Happiness. Yes, Doctor, doctor Happiness. And yeah. that was that was the first one we started off with. It was the, the vision board that we created. Oh, uh, okay. That's Doctor Happiness. So I okay. always I always encourage my clients to find something that they enjoy doing every day and make time for that because we do have a hectic life and we stress out with work with our kids overall with our lifestyle I always um, remind them that they need to find some type of joy that they enjoy doing like if they like art if they like being outdoor like I encourage them to at least do 30 minutes to an hour of that every day you know that reminds me of my own clients and how difficult it is for them to find what brings them joy. Because as you age, at least this is my experience, but as I'm aging, I I can definitely see how someone can forget to do something fun or to do something for themselves and just keep filling other people's cups instead of theirs. Yeah, I mean, we all do. We We become adults and we tend to forget what brings us joy, you know? What do we like to do? Um, do we make time for it? And as we become adults, we don't. We tend to neglect ourselves. We don't make time for ourselves. So that's why I encourage my clients to always focus on that first. Another thing I find I find difficult, not only in my life, but for others, you, you talked about it, sleeping. I've had some clients that come up to me and they say, hey, Alejandro, I got my eight hours of sleep. What time did you go to sleep? Is getting an eight hours, eight hours? I mean, you're still getting eight hours. Is there a time where I'm supposed to be sleeping at? Yes, yeah, so there is. I always encourage my clients to go to sleep either at nine or 10 in the night. And then from there, your body tends to restore itself. It tends to work on itself. When clients tend to go to sleep at 11 or 12, uh, and they do get their eight hours of sleep, <laughs> but they wake up the next day and they're like, I'm still tired. I slept like eight or nine hours. And I'm like, well, the reason you're tired is because you're pushing your body into sleeping later on. It's going to stress out your body even more. So your mm -hmm. body usually works on itself from, I think it's uh, 10 to 6 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always encourage my clients, go to sleep at a certain time that's going to benefit you, you know, not mm -hmm. at 1 in the morning, you know. That's not going to work if you still get 9 hours. You're still going to feel overwhelmed. Your body's going to be stressed out. Another thing you said that I find uh, quite funny as well was the drinking Red Bulls. To me, that that's... I think there's warning signs behind those caffeinated drinks. What really happens inside your body? With, when I work with clients and they come to me and they're always telling me, yeah, I have to drink four cups of coffee and then for lunch I have to take an energy drink and then later on they go to Starbucks and then they get more drinks that are sugary, you know, to keep mm -hmm. up their energy. They are already aware of the side effects of what causes to your body when you drink those drinks. So I do see a lot of clients already know this, but they tend to just go back and drink that because they're not that educated on how to overcome those issues. So the body does get overwhelmed. You get bloated, inflammation, your intestines start not working. That creates a lot of sickness in their body. So pretty much during this uh, constant yang state, it goes back to overworked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stressing the body out. Yeah, yeah. I know before this call, we were talking about how you were investigating cancer cells. You also talked about how the body, I think you said how the body can cure itself if you know the right tools, uh, maybe diet, 
maybe emotional baggage. Where are you at right now? And why did you decide to learn more about this path? So I got into this more because when I started going through a lot after having my son, or actually when I got pregnant with my son about nine years ago, I went through a dark moment of my life. And once I had him, I noticed that I had pain in my body. And that pain came from an accident that I had after giving birth. Um, three days after I, they released me. So they usually tell you, go home and rest. I ended up going to the store to get stuff for my son that he needed. And I ended up slipping um, in water at, at the store. So my leg kind of slipped and I kind of tore something in my inner groin. And from there on for the next nine years, I used to have so much pain in that area. I saw coaches, therapists, physical therapists, um, doctors, Nobody can tell me what was going on in that area. And then I came across this Czech practitioner. Uh, I think you might know him, Lee Brandon. He reached out to me and he had um, offered me an emotional code um, session. I already knew that the pain that I had in that area was connected to a trauma that happened in my past. And it was at that time when I had had my son. And then at that time, I had lost my best friend. She had died. Uh, it's my dog. I had her for almost 17 years. So that was very hard for me to overcome. And then I had problems in a relationship that I was in. So that kind of um, pushed me to the limit where I felt broke, you know, like I broke down. I felt like I hit rock bottom. And from there there on, I ended up having so much pain on, on that certain area on the right side. Going into the Czech Academy, you tend to learn where um, the pain comes from. There's different levels on your body. If the pain is coming from that area. It has to do either with work, with the relationship, with your parents, with a friend or with kids, you know, that area that I had pain, um, it had to be coming from the relationship that I was in. And I was going through a lot with that person. I had to work on myself in order to figure out why I kept having those problems, you know, and why that pain hadn't left. I did look within and I used to always play the victim role. And always blame that person. Well, it's your fault that, that I'm going through this, you know. It's your fault that this happened. And eventually, I realized that it wasn't his fault. It was all on me. I had to take full responsibility of what I had created in order for our relationship to hit that stage. Um, eventually, when I went to Lee, um, he did an emotional code. And he brought a lot of past um, trauma that I had gone through. And we went back to when I was little, when I was like six months. And even with my parents, I went through a lot of stuff with them that I didn't know it had like hit a core. It, um, it made me realize that the person I am now has a lot to do with my past trauma, you know, about my past. That's when I started looking within and figuring out, well, this is why I'm always quiet or this is why I don't ever set boundaries because of those moments that happened in my life. It did hit a nerve where I just couldn't be somebody else. I became that person and I felt like I was stuck in that situation where I had to, I don't know if it's making sense, but um, like I became very reserved, very quiet. And it was because of not being able to speak up. I did grow up with parents that um, were very um, strict and I was never allowed to voice my opinion. That's when I started realizing, well, those areas that Lee Brandon was bringing up, those areas, I need to look into them and work on those areas. And I did have a lot of suppressed emotions and from after having that those few sessions with him, it did open up my eyes and I started working on myself and it did help out a lot. And within a day or two, that pain that I had for nine years, it disappeared. And I couldn't believe it because I'm like, I went to doctors, I went to a lot of people, nobody could figure out what was going on. And 
once I spoke to him um, and he brought up those those moments that caused that pain, that's when I worked on myself and that pain went away. Sounds like magic. <laughs> At first when uh, it happened, I'm like, no, this pain is going to come back tomorrow. You know, it's impossible. Nine years of like this pain that I cannot get rid of and it's so painful. And just with those few sessions, it took a month for me to work with him, but within our last session that pain went away wow yeah and i feel like it's more of a suppressed emotion that we think that we have worked on it and that we have felt in reality we suppress a lot of emotions and we don't want to deal with them sometimes and they get stuck in our body and that's that's why it creates a lot of pain our posture becomes very tense. You know, sometimes our body locks, like our knees or our elbows or hands. It has to do a lot with um, suppressed emotions. And when I work with clients, I do see a lot of that. We go through um, assessment and questionnaires, and I do see that a lot of clients um, come to me and they have so much trauma in their body or in their life, and they have so many suppressed emotions that they haven't worked on. And that's why they come with a lot of pain and injuries. They they get to a point where they don't know what else to do, you know? That story hits home for me, like right here. You know, that whole thing that you said that I can't voice my opinion uh, or I can't speak out. You are reserved and all that came from childhood. That hits home because for me, my throat chakra gets clogged up. It's like, I can't speak out. I can't have an opinion. I can't share the world what's really going on inside because I'm living in a state of fear, state of anxiety, a state of closed, just being closed and not being able to express what needs to be expressed. And that also came from childhood as well. I don't know if it has something to do with the Hispanic community uh, but for, for me, it was always what dad says. I can't speak out. It was always what he wanted and not what I wanted. And what's crazy about this, this happened recently. We had a discussion and I'm, I'm noticing him talking and I'm just like, damn, in my mind. And I even said it to him, but in my mind, in that moment, I, I was, I was thinking he's talking and there's not there's not one point where i'm able to speak out or say something back to him it was it's always it's always me hearing what you have to say instead of the reverse do you see what i'm saying yes um i don't know if that's been your experience with your family members with dad mom yeah so with my father he was very strict he was a good dad but he was just I guess it it has to do with being Hispanic that um, men tend to be very um, what's the word like I don't know machista have you heard of that word <laughs> yeah I feel like a lot of a yes. lot of people will understand if I say that word yeah. um, yes so with my father I was never allowed to speak my voice I was never allowed to voice my opinion. And whatever he said went, you know, even when my mom tried to say something and state her opinion, we always went with what my dad said. And from that point on, I always felt like I always had to shut up and not say anything, you know, because I was never validated. I was never allowed to express myself. So I have always had problems with men in my life where I cannot express myself. And literally, maybe like, I want to say a year ago when I came into the academy, that's when I started um, realizing that I had to learn to set boundaries. I had to learn to speak up. And I had to learn to not allow my past, especially for my dad, hinder my growth. Because because of him, I didn't get to do a lot of things. I stopped myself so much because I felt like I didn't have a voice. And I struggled with anxiety, especially doing things that I wanted to do. That always stopped me, you know. I was always scared to speak up, especially speak in, in public or even do a one-on-one -on -one session or talk to a male. For me to do that, it's 
it was so hard. Once I realized that it had to do with my past and my father, eventually I overcame that. But I had to do a lot of work in order to overcome that, you know, I had to feel my emotions, you know, I wasn't allowed to feel my emotions when I was around my dad and my mom. I could not cry. I couldn't show any fear. I couldn't show any type of emotion when they would come around me. And it, and it's sad because we tend to not show emotions and that's when we tend to suppress a lot. We don't know how to feel and that causes our body to shut down. And I saw that I saw that a lot with myself and my sister's going through something like that too. And her body has shut down a lot. She's been struggling for the past four years. And I know it has a lot to do with our past. And especially with our parents, because I mean, we are our parents, we become our parents. And if we don't do the work and see what we take on from our parents and try to not be like our parents and not, I'm not saying like being like your parents is bad, but we do take on some traits that doesn't work for us and it hinders our growth and we become stuck and we, we create sickness in our body. We create disease in our body. We need to work on ourselves and we need to see what we carry on from our parents. And, you know, the more I do this inner work, the more I study Czech Institute, go to courses, I do less judgment, just like we talked about. But also, I there's more empathy. You know, as we grow, uh, we're healing. We want the best for our parents. I think everyone wants the best for their parents. Like as we're changing, we want them to change. We want them to to do the inner work as well. To do the physical work, to do the mental work, to do the spiritual work. That's been my hidden agenda. And the more I do this, the more I realize that I'm I'm carrying a lot of, a lot of baggage by doing that. And it's heavy because I'm adding more responsibility into my life. It's been 10 15 years of me trying to change my parents' diets. And you know what change I made so far by trying to change for 10 to 15 years? I would say one or two things. And that is changing your oils for like something like avocado oil and walk more. That's it. So that's my next question. Do you find yourself doing that, trying to change your parents? Uh, So yes, in the beginning when I started working out 10 years ago, I wanted to help all my family. But I realized very quickly that that wasn't going to happen. Once I started working on myself, people started seeing the difference. The different changes in my life, they saw me more vibrant. They saw me with more energy. They saw me more in a good mood you know from there on I noticed that they started changing Mm -hmm. because as human beings we always want to help our parents you know we want to help our family and friends sometimes not everybody will get the help that they need or they they won't change maybe that's the life that they want and we can't really do nothing about it that's the journey that they're going to want to take. I've noticed that once a person or a client starts working on themselves, then it'll ripple into them, their family changing as well. So I've been doing this for 10 years. And with my family, I've been sharing so much. And I'm like, well, my parents, I'm not going to be able to help them. You know, they, they are who they are and they're never going to change. And I feel like I gave up. And when I came into the academy three years ago, I noticed that within a year, my sister and my mom started changing. My sister was already on board with me because she's very similar to the things that I do. So she was already in the same place that I was. But with my mom, she is very very hard-headed, I guess. And I feel like with Mexican women, they tend to stick to their values and they never want to change, you know? Mm -hmm. And seeing my mom change um, opened up my eyes and I was like, okay, I do see that people can change, you know, if I, if my mom can change, then anybody has hope, you know, because it's hard to change your parents. (laughs) My dad, he still does what he does, but I mean, it's slowly, it takes time, especially with men to change. I don't know if it's their ego that comes in the way and they don't want to change, but I feel like with women, it's easier. 
Mm. Even though it takes a lot of time, but I feel like that it's easier with women. That's why I, le I lean towards helping women and children more than men. Mm -hmm. But yes, I do now, see a difference. Do you think it has something to do with the childhood stuff? Or maybe you have you can build more a bond with women more than men? Yes. And I would have to say um, for myself, is it has to do with my childhood with my father and me not having a close relationship with him that I tend to be more leaning more with women than men. So I would mm. rather work more with women than men. I do have <clears throat> a few clients once in a while that are men, but I do focus more on women and children. Yeah. See, see for me this is parallel, by the way, I can, I can help women and I can help men. I can help women because it's easier to tap into the emotional state because they're, they're more receptive to that. And I'm more receptive to that. But when I'm talking to men, I don't get that a lot. I don't receive that from men. Right. And maybe because it's society that has men hard. But when it comes to working out, training, team bonding, I can do that better with men on the physical, on the external side of it. When it comes to internal, the women, I find it easier to deal with that kind of stuff. I don't yeah. know if you had the same experience. Yes. So when I started working with men and women, when I became a Czech practitioner, I noticed that women with the holistic lifestyle side, um, coaching side, I noticed that women were more prone to do the work. And when I offered this, I offered the same thing to men. They were like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to tap into my emotions. I don't want to talk. I just want to work out, create yeah. a program, and I want to work out, and I want to be in a diet. And I'm like, it doesn't work like that. You need to, and, I, and the first thing I would tell them to do is get at least six to seven hours of sleep because men won't want to sleep that much, you know? Yeah. And, and I do notice that men can go on with their day with only five to six hours of sleep, you know, mm -hmm. and they function right. Women. We need eight hours of sleep or mm -hmm. I need eight hours of sleep. If not, I'll be cranky. I'll have a headache. I will not have energy. And um, I feel with men, they can get away with that. They wouldn't want to work on themselves. They just wanted to go work out, build muscle, look good, you know, <laughs> and eventually they would fall back into their old habits, you know, yeah. and it's because they didn't tap into or get to the root cause of what's, what was causing them to stay in that situation or in that area, you know? Damn. <laughs> and that's why I lean towards women than men, because uh. I can't babysit anymore. <laughs> I have three kids, and I'm already doing that work. Yeah, our egos can get in the way a lot more, I would say. I think Paul Check talked about shooting guns, and he said, and I'm pretty sure you know the saying. He said something along the lines where if you give a gun to a woman, she knows how to hit the target. When you give a gun to a man, the man will go ballistic and just shoot everywhere. <laughs> Destroy everything. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how this affected your children. Because you have three children, correct? Three kids. Yes. Do you notice that they see you differently? What do they, what do they say to mommy? So, um, yes, I do see that it has affected them in a good way. Um, I've done so much work on myself that instead of putting the blame on everybody else, I took responsibility. For parents, it's hard to, you know, realize that what your kids went through, it's your fault. We cannot go back and change what we did because we do live in a lot of guilt especially moms I don't know about men we have so much guilt that once our kids become older we tend to let them slide with a lot of things that they do because of what we did in the past sometimes we're like okay well she's like this or he's like that because I put her through that I feel like now I've learned to apologize to my kids and I learned to open up and connect with them and talk to them about our past. Um, I have three kids, so each kid got a different version of myself. With my first, I 
didn't know how to raise a child. And I feel like me and her bump hit so much. Me learning that why me and her bump hit so much and it's caused because of our past. The person I was then kind of made her into what she is now. And I feel like I need to break down that wall in order for her to connect with me and open up. I feel like she has so much resentment towards me that I need to do my part and find a balance where she's going to feel safe to talk to me and open up to me. And with my second child, she she's different. She tells me, mom, like, I do see a different in you. I see that you're working on yourself and you know, you're trying to fix the mistakes that you did with us back in the day, you know. And I do see a difference in you. And that makes me happy that, you know, at least one child sees that, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I'm too hard on myself. And I'm, every night that I go to sleep, I stress myself out. And I'm like, I could have done this, you know. I should have done that. I could have been a better mother. Like, why did I snap or why did I act this way? Why did they, why did I give him an attitude, you know? And I feel like um, as long as um, mothers are working, working on themselves and seeing that they are growing, that they're doing the work, that's the goal that we're trying to achieve and not be so um, hard on yourself. You don't want to feel guilty. Um, so with my son, he sees a lot of the things that I do. I mean, I raised him through my journey of healing myself. So he has seen everything that I've done for myself. And he does see that I am helping people. I'm helping children, you know. So um, with my son, he sees everything. And I feel like he's growing up to be more um, mentally stronger than my other kids because of who I was back then. I didn't know enough. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know any better. I just knew what I knew. And that I thought I was supposed to raise them like that. But I do I do see a difference in each kid. They get different versions of me. And now I hope that they learn from my mistakes and don't hold that against me, you know? Uh, one of my mentors, this is what he said. He said, if you were to reflect, what is it like to see your parents raising a child at 19 years old, right? And what that means for me is if you reflect back to what your age is at that time and how wise you are at that age. It seems like you're still a baby. You're raising another baby with this, with the stuff you've learned with parents, childhood traumas. And that to me, when, when I see that and I reflect back, I'm like, man, I have more, I have more compassion towards self. So it's quite fascinating because it's no matter what age you are, um, you only have what you have, the tools. You're only aware of what you're aware. And I find that to be fascinating. It It is fascinating. My mm -hmm. sister always tells me that. Um, she tells me our parents didn't know any better. They thought that they were doing their best, you know. They thought that they were doing good. You can't hold that against them, you know. Sometimes I'm like, just cut our parents out of our lives, you know. I'm the type that if you do me wrong, I'm gonna cut you off. Mm. I'm a Scorpio, so. Mm. <laughs> but um, she's taught me that you can't do that, you know. You need to work with them where they're at, and you need to just be patient, and um, eventually they'll come around, unless it's a toxic parent where they're abusive like physically or emotionally then yeah cut them off but you can't just cut them off because and, and that's my ego getting in the way you know when I want to cut <laughs> people off but yeah I, I've worked on myself and now I'm like okay well I have to sit with my feelings and be like well is this gonna benefit me or is it gonna hinder my growth you know so yeah yeah <laughs> You know, there was this other thing that someone talked about. I don't know. I forgot. Maybe it was uh, me learning psychology. And they said that even when someone is getting abuse, they're still going to keep on living versus if the parent treats that kid as if he wasn't there or she wasn't there, then the kid is prone to commit suicide. Because at least when they're getting abused, they're getting attention from mommy and daddy. So I wonder... As you grow up in this abusive relationship, I wonder, you know, how long you can deal with that. Or I wonder what creates, what, what type of trauma that starts to flourish. Do you know if the kids 
saw these traumatic events and how are they dealing with it? And I'm not saying you're being abused or anything like that. I was just giving you an example yeah. of something else. So are you asking me about my kids? Yes. Or, okay. Your yeah. kids. Um, I feel like with my kids, uh, I was very not physically abusive because um, with our parents, um, they used to hit us, of course, like with oh, yeah. the changla or with the belt, you know, they used to correct us and... When I had kids, my partner and I decided not to put hands on them, you know? We felt like that we can talk to them instead of putting our hands on them. Unless it's to the point that they are, are out of control. I feel like sometimes doing that may help them, you know? I mean, with my parents, when they used to hit me, it, it did correct me. It did make me go in the correct route you know on the good route so um with me and my kids I usually used to snap and I feel like a lot of women and a lot of moms would agree with me where we can't control our emotions sometimes and we just snap that's something I've always had to live with I guess verbally abuse abusing them not learning when to yell at them and tone it down Sometimes kids do push our buttons and they do trigger us to snap. From that point on, I realized that I had to learn, well, why was I getting triggered, you know? I need to realize what areas are triggering me and figuring out how am I going to work on that to not get triggered. With my kids, um, I think it was mostly that area. And for myself, I feel like they went through what I went through with my parents were I didn't have a voice. I couldn't share my opinion. I always had to go with what the man says. And eventually I learned to set boundaries and I learned to not make the mistakes that my mom did because I didn't want my girls to grow up thinking that, okay, well, I have to follow what the man said and I have to do this and that. You know, I wanted them to have their own opinion, their own mind. And that's when I started working on myself and I. I can share this with them and tell them, oh, no, don't let a man do this to you or do that to you, you know. But they're going to learn from what I do, not what I say. So I had to become more present in that area and, and take control in that area. I felt like now they see what I was trying to teach them. I'm not teaching them to be a feminist. I teach them that if you're going to have a kid, you need both parents in their life you need the mom and the dad because when you're raising a child the mom um, raises the child for the first few years eventually the dad will take on that responsibility and be more present in their life because in the beginning the mom nurtures the kid more you know we give them more nurturing more affection more love more care and eventually the kid starts to go a different route and start misbe misbehaving or talking back or acting like how they're supposed to act and that's when the father comes in and corrects that i noticed that um with my son he started becoming like that and i talked to his dad and his father started correcting him more being more in his life taking him out just one-on-one -on -one with him and it helped out um discipline him a lot because he didn't know how to control his emotions he thought it was okay to hit um his sisters or myself he had to learn that it's not okay to act that way my um partner taught him how to control his emotions and not react that way mm. so i feel like both parents need to be in a kid's life sometimes you see parents that are just raising one one kid and with one parent and you can tell that they're missing that feminine side or that masculine side and they take on those traits either being um too much around a woman or too much around a man and i see that a lot with clients too when they come to me and the issues the problems that they have i do notice that some women are so masculine that they do not know how to be feminine that's why they are sick that's why they have so much pain in their body or they have injuries because they have they have suppressed that side and they need to learn how to balance that. And when they come to me, I teach them, you know, you need to um, feel safe 
when you're around a man, you need to feel safe. Let them be masculine and you your feminine side will come up, you know. But if you're around a man that's too masculine and they're not making you feel safe, then you'll become more masculine. And that's why people crash a lot. People have arguments a lot because they don't know how to balance that. And I teach my clients that when you're balanced, I think it's 80% feminine that we need to be women and 30% masculine. But sometimes single mothers tend to have more of the masculine side because they have to take on all of that, you know? They have to be the dad too. So. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. That's funny you say that because one of my coworkers, we were just talking about this kind of stuff. She's a single mother and she's openly expressed this to me how she is tired of being so damn masculine and she just needs a man this is what she says. She needs a man to put her in her place, to put her back to her femininity because she's so yanged out with this partner or this guy that she was seeing because he was the opposite of yang, very feminine. She just couldn't do it. She says, I can't, I can't deal with a man that acts like a female or has a lot of more feminine energy, and especially in a bed, she said. And I found that to be so funny because she's so masculine. Is what I'm saying. I can definitely see what you're talking about. And I wonder for her what that means when there's a, a man that's in his femininity. I wonder how that those two will interact. Do you see that? I do see that a lot. I mean, we're leaning uh -huh. towards that nowadays where women are more masculine and men are becoming more feminine. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with um clients and friends of mine um i do see that a lot where they're so masculine and they overshadow the men and the men tend to stick to that area of being more feminine and they're always blaming the man you know and i i let them know like well you're being too um controlling too masculine you're not allowing him to express himself you're not allowing him to um be the man. I think men need to step it up and be in control of their emotions too. And you know, both of us need to do the work. We need to tone it down a little and men need to tone it up a little, you know, because <laughs> um, we're going in that area now, like the world is shifting and more women are becoming more masculine and more men are becoming more feminine. You know, we're not, we don't know how to balance that. And I do see a lot of kids being more towards being feminine and just everything that's going on in the world I feel like we're getting lost that's why I, I wanted to start working with children and create something where they can learn from and give them the tools so they can work on themselves and not wait until they're adults to work on themselves and it's too late because they have so much trauma in that in their body so um yes we we are definitely shifting in this world now Jeez. And I do notice that um, with clients, uh, women are in, I know it has to do a lot with society that they're um, putting out that we don't need men, you know, we can do it on our own. And that's why we are becoming more masculine because we're taking on that role, you know, we're getting jobs and we're financially taking care of our families and the men are starting to become more lazier and letting the woman take over everything, you know, in reality, we do need men, we need women and men, you know, like, I don't understand why women tend to be more feminist nowadays. It's sad because at the end of the day, we do need a man, you know, I need a man. And yes, I can do a lot of things without a man. But in reality, we're going to be unbalanced. That's when we're going to be stressed out even more because we're taking on so much. We're overwhelming ourselves. And that's when we create a, a, a hormonal imbalance. And our, our hormones are everywhere. And that's where we end up taking on so much and our body starts shutting down. And our body's reminding us, I'm not feeling well because you're putting too much stress, you know? I see that like man can't live with, without women and women cannot live without man. Society, this whole like imbalance role for both men and women where you have the toxic mas masculinity, which is very extreme. Then you have 
you know, the toxic femininity or feminists. You see what I'm saying? So it's going like too far right and too far left. And I think a lot of people will resonate with this. To uh, put a bow on this, what would you like to uh, let people know? Maybe you can tell us more about your workshop and how all of this come together and who is it for? All right, so I do a 12 year long workshop series. We focus on holistic lifestyle coaching. So these workshops are mainly about holistic lifestyle. My goal is to guide my clients on a meaningful journey of self discovery and healing together, we will identify and address the root cause of hindering your health, overcome limiting beliefs, heal past traumas, and elevate your conscious all within a supportive and safe environment. So the workshops are mainly for just women. I want to have a safe haven for them, for them to express themselves, for them to be honest, you know, and connect with other women that are going through the same thing. And by asking yourself these questions, you you open up the door to understanding your true values, beliefs, goals, and desires. So which can often be overshadowing by external influence, knowing what you truly, truly matters to you will empower you to communicate effectively and pursue what you want in life. With clients, when they come to me, sometimes are going through what I went through, you know, they don't know how to communicate, they don't know um, how to work on themselves, we give them the tools that they need, we do questionnaires, assessments on them, it's a journey that they have to do it on their own, I give them the tools, I cannot do this for them, but they need to be 100% there doing the work. And some people come, some people want to do it, but it's too much for them, maybe they're not ready. So these workshops are for women that are ready to take on that that part. Wow. Well said. If my sister was near you, I would secretly sign her up. <laughs> <laughs> How's your Spanish? And I wonder if you would if you would do a workshop in Spanish. Yeah, so I do offer that. I okay. always do it in English, but if I do have um cuz the gym is mostly Hispanic women, so I do offer if there are any people that speak Spanish and don't speak English, I will translate. So we do both. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because in the Spanish community, I don't know if this information is really out there, is it? And it's, it's not, you know. When I teach my clients this, they go back to their parents and they tell them and they're like, no, I'm going to stick to my oils, you know, and yeah. especially... Hispanic people yeah. tend to use the worst oils, the sugar, mm. and but it's good that sometimes my attendees come with their moms. They're like, "Can I bring my mom?" And I'm like, "Yeah, she'll be free." You know, I mean, if you're bringing your mom, like that's a plus. What mom is gonna come to the, these things? You know, if you ask them, they're not gonna want to. But I do have a lot of attendees that ask me. And I'm like, "Dude, bring them." It's a big thing that both of you are gonna work on yourselves, and you're gonna learn the tools. You know. So. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That's a market. You know, that's a market right there. Yes, it is. The Hispanic community, they're always eating their cafe con pan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Adding oh a lot God. of sugar to the coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And then they'll put the uh, the creamer, um, <laughs> that creamer that has like this much of ingredients. <laughs> and I was one of those people like I my coffee. I'm addicted to that. That mm -hmm. with my first child I used to drink coffee every morning and the doctors would always be like you cannot be drinking coffee when you're pregnant you know oh, yeah and then I would always drink it and I'm like oh my god like I was the worst mother you know I should have mm. listened I should have known better you know that's why I want to teach this especially to the Hispanic community because we need a lot of help we need to be educated and mm -hmm. the gym that I work at the the women there they're amazing like it's just a gym full of women and we all help each other out and we all support each other. There's no jealousy. There's no competition. And when I walked in those doors, I was like, wow, like I've worked at other gyms and women are very catty. You know, they want to be on top. They, they won't help each other out. They won't support each other. And coming to this gym, it was like, wow, like I finally found home. You know, they let me teach whatever I want to teach. And what they're teaching is the same values as mine. So that's why it's been working out so well. And I love this gym. And the woman there, like Sabrina, the owner, she is amazing. 
She's so selfless. She's always willing to help anybody out. And right now she's my mentor. I look up to her and I don't want to leave this gym. I've been learning so much. She's she's the girl that helped me overcome my fear of talking in front of a camera. Like she would always tell me, you need to record yourself and put um, stories out there on social media so women can get to know you and get to know what you're offering. And I was like, I can't do that. Like, this is so hard for me, you know? <laughs> and she's like, you're going to have to do it. And I'm like, well, I don't want to stop working there. So I'm going to have to like step it up and do it. And <laughs> I remember the first day I recorded myself, it took me five hours. Dang. Like, Yes. And it was so hard for me to overcome that, you know? Yeah. And after that, it became easier, you know? And it, that was one of my biggest fear, you know, talking in camera. And after that, I was like, wow, it was worth it. Those five hours that I was practicing, it was worth it because look at me now, like I'm doing it. I, if not, I would have been stuck in the same place, you know, and not growing. But uh, Sabrina helped me out and she gave me those tools to overcome those fears. So yes, those women, Sabrina, Andrea, and Christina and Jackie, those women are amazing. Like, I don't know, I would have been this, gone this far without them. Mm. It's, it's the best gym in California out there. The women that go there, there, there are some that are like me, where I hate working at a public gym. I used to go to them and I just hated everything about them. Um, so I'm the type that I will work out at home mm. or I will work out at a private gym you know but um this gym like everybody's friendly everybody's so supportive like right when you walk in everybody smiles at you greets you like you feel welcomed you know and with other gyms you don't feel that you feel like very a lot of competition a lot of negative energy and it's just so different at this gym. Andrea, the girl that trains there, she um, called me and asked me if I wanted to come talk to the owner because they were looking for somebody to do a seminar for um, hormonal imbalance. And I was like, oh my God, I just took that work, that um, course, you know, at the Czech Academy and that course changed my life. So I came in and there was three trainers there and the owner and I showed them everything I, um, I, I learned and they loved it. And I took my binder of the 12 workshops that I offer. And I told them like, this is what I offer, you know? And they're like, well, you're hired. You're going to do the seminar for the hormonal imbalance. And then they were like, but we want you to do those workshops that you have shown us. We want you to do it here. And I was like, wow, like, you know, I just went in for the seminar and they, uh, they're they allowing me to work there and host my workshop. So it was a win-win for all of us. Wow. It, I feel like it was meant to be, you know, the universe had, set this up because if this would have happened last year I wouldn't have been ready you know mm -hmm. I felt like everything is falling into place once you work on yourself and you take responsibility of what has happened in your life and you're doing the work I feel like everything falls into place and I feel like every time I ask the universe or God if I ask for something like it comes to me at the right moment beautiful yeah, sorry. Well, <laughs> we got off topic. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I love talking about the universe, God, or whatever you believe in. I see that in myself as well. When I change my perspective, when I do the inner work, like things become smoother, clearer. People don't know this about about me, uh, but I was uh, in a state of depression like six months ago, um, and that depression came from not doing the things that you are doing, you know, doing the inner work, reflecting. I definitely see how, you know, doing all this kind of stuff will conspire the universe, conspire to your favor. I mean, because I always tell my clients, I'm like, we're going to go through a lot of things in our lives that is going to set us back. Mm -hmm. But as long as you have the tools to overcome this and you're doing the work, you're going to be okay. You know, we can't, there, there's always going to be death. There's always going to be situations that is going to come our way and we can't control it. But as long as you know how to work on yourself and how to overcome those obstacles, you're going to be just fine. And we're all going to go through depression and we just need to remind ourselves, you know, and do the work, like you said, sometimes we forget, and we just have to remind ourselves like, okay, well, why am I feeling this way? I have to do this and that I have to work on myself to balance everything out. 
And one thing pops in my mind was, uh, I don't know if you know, but I did it ayahuasca and also did a cer- another ceremony called heroic dose or heroic dosing with mushrooms. And one of the revelations I received was anchoring back to the present moment because I was getting stream of consciousness. Just I was going from one end to another. So I would be everywhere, basically, of living different patterns, like living different consciousness, different realms. And my revelation was, no, what's more important is living in the present moment, anchoring back here, home, presence. And I see a pattern, you know, if I were to integrate that into the real world, those streams of consciousness and realms is me getting away from my body. Those patterns are being on a cell phone for so long, you know, being on YouTube for so long, watching TV, talking negative to other people and being so external, being so external is that that to me leads to depression because you forgot who you are you forgot to anchor back to home yeah i don't know if you have the same experience as what i had how you can see that that revelation could lead to that and it does like i i've never done ayahuasca but what you just um mentioned it it has happened you know and i with my middle child i'll have conversations with her that I'll be like, why am I always on my phone? And I'm trying to distract myself from something. And she reminds me like, well, what are you trying to hide from? You know, I'm like, okay, well, this is why I'm doing this. I am distracted because I don't want to deal with that right now. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm not ready to deal with it. And sometimes we become depressed. We become isolated because we don't want to deal with it. You know, we're not ready to deal with it. And so, yeah, I can agree with you. (laughs) Uh, but yeah thank you uh for jumping on this call with me it's been a pleasure uh meeting the real emmy i hope uh we get a lot of signups for your class uh, because a lot of i think a lot of people need to know about this kind of stuff i'm biased because this is what i do but (laughs) i really do hope people um sign up and learn more about themselves and how hormones play a role in their workouts and everything else in their life. And uh, we will see everyone on the next. Namaste. Thank you.